Hi, I'm Robbie O'Davis. 223 games for Newcastle Knights, 13 beautiful games for Queensland, the state of origin, and 10 tests for Australia. Funny, I'm one of them Queenslanders that were born in New South Wales, where I was born in Carajong um, within a year or two. Dad was playing for Penrith at the time, and within a year or two, he tried not to take a breath and jump the border to Queensland. Just about to turn 17, and Johnny Lang blooded me in Lang Park on a Saturday. Knights were playing the Broncos on a Sunday at Lang Park, and um, they heard about a 16 year old kid running around in first grade in the Queensland Cup, or what they call it now. And I went down the field in Lang Park and scored two tries, got man of the match, and straight after that, the Knights just walked in the dressing room and signed me on the spot. 1990, I moved down to Newcastle and been here ever since. The second game I played in, in St George, I scored a length of field try in 1992, I got the try of the year that year. Dave Wade came after the game to me and said, mate, I started on the wing, now you're going to play fullback for me, and you're going to stay there for the rest of my life. And I never even played fullback before, I just, I'd been a 5'8 all my life, so. Yeah, and the history shows the rest, I guess. There was the Johns boys, young and, and eager, and then you come Adam Muir at the same time, and the Wayne Richards and Adam McDougall, and like just the, all these personalities, and Mark Hughes, and they just kept coming, Darren Albert. You don't like to say it because you know, we have professional athletes, but we drink to train, train to drink. <laughs> so it's just, and we just like drunk ourselves through two grand finals, pretty much. Play for a team that is answering to a town. When you go down to Sydney, you just play for a team that answered to a suburb. So when you play for a town, it's pretty special. And 100,000 people let us out. We like rock stars. Mate, we left there and Chief grabbed us down and said, geez, we're not going to go back without this thing. I've seen Terry Hill get kicked in the ribs um, on the right-hand side the week before, and he was like coming back, and I just went, oh, geez, if I ever get a chance to go out them right hand side ribs of the grand final, I might just just dummy and dig myself into him and see how he pulls up out of it. Matthew Josh. Joey give it to Matt, and Matt just give it straight to me. And, oh, and I looked at Terry's shoulder, so I had twos and Terry, and as I dummy it under to Owen Craig, I think, come under me, and then I dummy it under just to dig myself into um, Terry's ribs, and he wasn't there no more. <laughs> He'd gone back here somewhere. I just ran and scored, and as I was running, and, and Fatty, Commentator like, oh, here, here, yeah, uh, look at him smiling on the way to the line, sort of thing. And as I'd done the roll, I seen Deuce coming on, yeah, and as he came to me, he's like, yeah, the boys. <laughs> so I just wrapped it in there. So it's got as big as the Nightbush City Limits around town up after that. So every time you go to a nightclub and stuff, everyone was doing this stupid Robbie O dance. So. Come back into town, you know, the same 100,000 that was leading us out of town, we standing here at the Workers Club, just, it was above the law. Honestly, we had people jumping on the bus. On the Tuesday night, I was jumping in the water at the, the brewery just down the road here and I'd walk in the streets freezing cold at two o'clock in the morning and I had the same clothes on, I wore the, the game actually and I'd call the CBD, it's a little pub down the road here and I knocked on the window and a little Asian lady that was doing the cleaning wouldn't let me in. No, 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 I'm going to Newcastle Nights. She goes, no, 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 no Newcastle Nights. I said, well, I just need to sleep, sleep, I need to sleep. And the owner of the pub is in the background, like, mate, come in, come in. He goes, come and have a beer. I said, no, mate, no beer, just sleep. So he's put the beer in front of me and I just fell asleep and woke up to two cops standing over top of me in a bed. So they come and jump up and they've walked me in, handcuffed me the buggers and <laughs> walked me down and chucked me in the paddy wagon. I was sitting in the paddy wagon handcuffed and they drove me to a pub around the corner called the Kent Hotel. And they've opened up, took the handcuffs off and chucked me in the Kent Hotel and said, the boys are all in there waiting for you. They've been looking for the last two hours and they were in, like the cops employed to keep us together for the whole week. But yeah, 97 was just that one time in the life you'll never ever have again. I was in the gym one day and I just went, mate, I need some energy, I need to get up because I train at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm the first one to train, the last one to leave and all that sort of stuff. And I sit next to a young bloke called Darren in the gym, he worked in the gym, and he said there's a pro hormone, best energy booster. I said, what does that mean? He said, it's just already in your body, it's not like a steroid or nothing, where it adds to it, it's just pro hormones. So I went and played a game of football and it set my testosterone levels from 12 to 1, which is your legal limit is 5 to 1. And yeah, by the time I got to the court hearing and Dougal and Wayne Richards and Rodney Howard all test positive um, to, you know, injectables and I just was then, I suppose, a victim of circumstance. They all went down and I went down with them. So I come back and I was just never the player ever again that I, I was before I left and, and then retired at the age of 32 because I didn't want to play against Newcastle. So I just decided at the age of 32 I'd give up the worst decision I've ever made in my whole life because uh, forever retired and retired very, very young and very, very fit. 
yeah, when Knight said they're not going to take me on again, that was a hard one. And, and yeah, I just I thought loyalty was a big thing in the sport, which obviously you see it's very, it's very much not. I had become a bit of a household name, and I do get knowledge walking down the street a fair bit and all that sort of stuff. Still, still sign your autograph, and you still stick your chest out and your shoulders back when someone asks you. You're still proud. But at the same time, it's it's sent me into a lot of heartache because I can't. Um, have the income I used to have, and I obviously can't do what I used to have. My body doesn't allow me to play sport no more, and all I ever did was play sport, so I had to become a worker, and I just had to do everything I possibly can to, to put food on my kids' ta table and a roof over my kids' head. And mate, I just I dug up the whole, whole of Newcastle, dug up the whole NBN, put, put it under the ground. But my dad was 194 kilos at the time, my mum was probably 130 odd kilo, and I just wanted to save their lives, so I started a free boot camp. Um, with ASN down the road and first night I started this free boot camp there was 54 people showed up at Nobby's Beach next night there was 87 next night 150 next night 200 and something and it just grew that big after about six six weeks I said well I can't have all these people training you for nothing so how about we do something and I put a bucket on the ground and I said why don't we just put change in a bucket whatever you think the thing's worth no, no more than five bucks and someone, someone yelled out change for change I said we've got a, we've got a name change for change so Nine years ago, Change for Change started, and um, within three years, we had 10,000 registered people online. And I've trained every single one of those 10,000 people. Since then, that's another five years on. Christ knows how many people have come. I've got people coming to me in the streets said, you've saved me life, they're super fit now. It wasn't until exactly a week ago that I've just, my mental health just took over, and I said, this is time for me to just call it quits. I'm, I'm training every other bug, I'm making every other bug healthy and happy and, and feel good about themselves, and I'm, I'm not loving myself, so it's time for me to just quit it all and it's time for me to go away for a while and get my own mental health right. And so it took me nine years of helping other people to finally realise that I'm the one that really needs help, yeah. Because I was always low to the ground, made me look like a sports car, look, look like I was going fast all the time and people was probably like that. And I was a pretty tough little bugger too, I guess.